Oh, there you go. There you go. Got him. That number 10. Stay on there, buddy. That is a male. <laughs> that is a spawning male. Holy smokes. Before we get into the video, make sure you check out the Father's Day sale going on at the Bass Tank right now when you click on the Panoptics. If you buy a Panoptics Live Scope bundle, you will get a free perspective mode mount. It is a $100 value. Yes, you're getting it for free. So be sure to go to the Bass Tank now until Sunday, June 13th. If you want this deal, click on the Live Scope bundle. You can buy that and you will get the free Panoptics Live Scope perspective mount. Now until June 13th, Father's Day, offer ends. Be sure to click the link at the top of the description. Let's get into the video. Welcome back to another one, ladies and gentlemen. Today we're on a brand new lake. I've never fished this lake before, even though I live about 45 minutes away from it. Um, I wanted to point out a couple of things. So I'm going to show you a screenshot off the hummingbird here. I was using Lake Master's charts. And when I'm looking for new spots or on a new lake, uh, I'm looking for the spawning flats this time of year. It's mid-May. Well, we're getting towards the end of May. It's May 20th right now. And uh, our crappie this time of year should be peak spawn. This is probably when you're going to find the largest wave of crappie pushed up under their spawning flats. Somewhere between, I mean, they could be as shallow as one foot of water. They could be in eight to nine feet of water. Um, so on the Lake Master ships here, you can see kind of like this little point that comes out. And it comes out to about eight to nine feet. But the upper part of the point is about four to five feet and it's a flat. On the side imaging, I can see the clear break of thick weeds to where it's kind of sparse weeds or just sand bottom. And that's kind of the perfect location for spawning fish, not just crappie, but bluegill bass. That's kind of what I'm looking for. A screenshot of the Navionics here, I don't actually see this point. It doesn't show me anything. Um, I was using the Garmin to, to use side imaging to find this point, but this area is kind of hit or miss for Lake Masters versus Navionics. That's why I like to run both. I like to have the option to run both. So anyway, this video, we're doing some bonehead tackle. Yep, I was in Texas last November. I got to meet Tommy Ezel and uh, he said, hey, try this out. So Tommy, huge thank you. Try this out. You can pick this up. You can pick bonehead tackle up at uh, Krabby Cove. Yeah, crappycove.com. I am uh, teamed up with Krabby Cove. I met Blake on the Tennessee trip while fishing Watts Bar Lake and teamed up with those, with those guys. So great group of guys. If you want to check out bonehead tackle, go to crappycove.com. Pick some of this up. Today we're going to be using, I believe this one's called, I believe that one's called the electric chicken. So we're gonna we're gonna start off with that, and uh, hopefully catch a bunch of crappie here. I'm gonna show you on the side imaging kind of what exactly I'm looking at in terms of where I'm casting into the weeds, because it's a very specific spot. You're not gonna cast up into the huge weed mat because these weeds are actually pretty thick. Um, earlier in May, if the weeds were pretty sparse, you could cast into the big flat and probably pull out some pretty good fish. But right now it it's a little too difficult to rip a jig through those thick mats. So casting kind of on the edge or where there's some sort of bald spot in between the, the weed bed, that's pretty much the key. Let's get this electric chicken tied on, start catching some crappie. All right, so to start off, we're going with the six and a half foot. This is my spawning setup. I like to use this one if I'm, cause I'm not, probably not gonna bomb cast this. This is a great little setup, fixed bogger rig. It is designed for casting, for precision casting. If you notice, they have the uh, double eyelet here. Designed for precision casting. Six pound mono, 1000 size PC Fun Viper reel. Love the color combo, but also it's a solid reel. Color doesn't matter at the end of the day. If they had jig heads in that box. So we're going 132nd with the uh, electric chicken. Kind of like a beaver tail pattern here. Now what I wanted to show you, right on the edge of this thick weed mat, and it's the weeds stop in about six to seven feet. These fish are set up and they're, they're set up inside the weed bed, but you can't really fish them in the weed bed, which sucks because you can't feel a bite. So you gotta kind of let that thing fall into the weeds and rip it out and get it on the edge of the weed bed before you can actually feel a tap.
I know you're up there. There he is. There's one. There we go. Found him right there. It's a decent one. And that is a spawned out female. Oof. The way to tell the difference. Way to, way to tell the difference on the spawned out female. Well, it might have a little bit of eggs in her, but normally their bellies are huge. That's a white belly. There we go. That's another. What do we got here? I'm gonna guess 10. Oh yeah, 10 inch crappie, there we go. And since she does, she's, that's your pretty typical Wisconsin crappie, so since she is uh, post-spawn, doesn't look like she's got eggs, I'm gonna throw her in a live well, fry her up tonight. They're right here. They're right here. This is a much better, gosh dang, popped it. There he is, got him that time, just took him a while to get it. There we go. Oh, oh, he broke. Oh, <laughs> he just threw my jig. <laughs> I'll have to retie. That is a, uh, might not be nine. There's no limit or size limit. Oh, he is nine. There's a nine incher. Oh, put your fin down, bud. Yep, there he is. Nine and a quarter. He's going to go in the box. Not a big fish, but it's a typical eater for up north. I think that the jigs that are in that box, you got to be careful if you tie a loop knot with them. Um, there's the the eyelet that the jig head has, there's a little gap on the bottom. And I'm thinking that loop knot kind of slid out. I'm using six pound test too, so it's it's a pretty thin line. Yeah, there's a loop knot. Yeah, it just slid at the bottom, so I'll have to tie a different knot, but tied this on or just hooked this up. I'm using the uh, the bottom notch, the one closest to the spring. That's the fixed bobber notch, half inch. This is my go-to. I've I've done this video probably I don't know two or three times already this year with the half inch rod and bobs. And all, as you can see, just pitching that thing in front of it is a little more of a subtle bite. You know, midday I probably should have suspected that they don't want it something cruising over the top of the weed bed. It looks like if you can pitch it on top of them, pop it a few times just to let it sit there and let them come up and take it. That subtle bite. Feel like we're gonna catch a bunch of crappie today because of that. They're, they're literally spread from about 30 to 40 feet across, right on the edge of that weed that weed line. They're on the last section of weeds and they're suspended right above them. I might be a little deep. There he is. Oh my goodness. I don't even think I had the cameras rolling yet. I just switched up to uh, a different color just to show them something a little bit different you know the, the problem with midday fishing is one the bites cold already and if you keep pitching in with the same same color pattern they just get used to seeing it and they don't want it so switch it up that's a uh, it's another female it spawned out see the belly ain't that big you can kind of yeah so another nice nice little female let's throw her in the the box there but uh, I'll show you what I threw on here and this is nice assortment that bonehead has I'm not sure if this one this exact assortment is on crappie cove but you can get crappie uh, bonehead tackle on crappie cove so if you don't see this on the website just message them and uh, they'll send it to you but uh, I had to back up I was starting to drift into that that weed edge I'm trying to stay off it a little bit but here's what I had this is the uh, pearl and confetti, I think it's called, or it's just confetti. But I cut it in half because our crappie, they, they don't want this big thing. This, I think, is a three inch bait. They don't want something this big. They probably want an inch and a half. And uh, this is what I was using. I might switch it back to this. I might just kind of rotate baits there. Oh, there he is. Gosh dang, right again. I'm trying to reset my cameras and. They hit it as soon as I restart. That's a decent one. That's a good crappie. Simply changing up that bait pattern. And you can see I cut that, that bait in half. That's another solid one. Oh, and I believe that's number, number five in the box. 
the one thing I am doing and I've kind of figured out, typically if I was fishing earlier in the morning, I'd be able to pop this bobber a lot faster. Um, I've done this in, well, a couple weeks ago, I did a video like this, casting this fixed bobber setup with a hair jig and I was able to move it quite a bit because they were super aggressive early on in the morning. The midday tactic, you gotta let it sit there. Both times this bobber was just kind of rolling in this waves. There's so much boat traffic right now, it's causing a, a nice little wake and it's moving that jig for me. And both times I look up and all of a sudden that bobber's going down. Oh, there he is. Man, he hit it hard too. There's another one. Ooh, that's a, that's a better one. <laughs> that's a pretty good crappie. Now that, I don't think has spawned out yet. So we're gonna let this one go. This is a bigger female that has not spawned out yet. And I think I landed right on her bed. That's a quality crappie. That is a quality crappie for, uh, for up north. It's probably, it's, that's gotta be close to a 12 inch fish. We'll measure it real quick. And she absolutely thumped that. I mean, it was a pop of that bobber. There was no doubt. Thumped that little, half of that little bonehead tackle thing. Let's put her on the bump board here. She's gonna be close. Oh, almost flew out of the boat. All right, we got, oh, she's 11. It's an 11 inch fish. Not 12, but still, that is a solid crappie for northern Wisconsin. And I think you can see she's got a bigger belly. She has not spawned out yet, so we're gonna we're gonna let her go. Oh, there he is. He popped it and that bobber went sideways. I think that's a male. Yeah, that's definitely a male. It's got a black belly still. See, that's a, that's a black belly right there. That's how you tell the difference, but that guy is probably gonna go back. Oh, he's a nine and no way is that a nine inch fish. No way. He, oh my goodness. He's just shy of nine. And I do want to keep fish. We're gonna keep him. That's not a big fish, but. There's no limit on the lake in terms of size, so I can keep them. Not really one I'm proud of keeping, but you know. That was, a, that was more of a negative bite. So he thumped it and that bobber went for, instead of going straight down, it went like this. Yeah, that's how I knew that fish was on it. So sometimes they'll just take it right down and sometimes they'll have that kind of negative bite where they'll grab it and kind of rise up in the water column with it. There he is. My goodness, this has been such a grind of a bite. I've been fishing since about a quarter to one. It's already, it's almost 2.30. And I've, I don't even know if I've caught seven fish, but there's a nice, nice eater male. And what I think is kind of saving me on this midday bite is the fact that there's enough wind and there's enough boat traffic creating enough chop to kind of break up the surface. Uh, that's allowing me to fish shallow. There's probably another. I'll throw him on the scale here. He looks like he's probably nine. Man, they uh, they don't want to stay on the scale though. Yeah, he's another nine. Yeah, it's a nine-inch fish. Ooh. So throw him in the lab. Well, that's I believe that's number seven. I don't know, it's gonna be a grind to get 10. I'm supposed to go walleye fishing later tonight too, so. We'll see if we can, uh, see if we can get 10. It's gonna be a grind, I feel like. If it was flat calm and you were fishing midday, I would 100% go with minnows.
There he is. Landed right on top of him. It's another decent one, I think. Choked it too. Oh, that camera died, dang it. But he, uh, he absolutely choked that one. Here's number eight. I might try to find another flat kind of like this. I didn't see a ton on the map that uh, had flats like this for spawning areas, but that's, uh, that's gonna be number eight for the box. That's a male again. You can see the black belly. So, there we go. Oh crap. That's not good. I'm right on top of the flat. Right, let's see if there's something on top of this. Oh my goodness, they are. Our... There must be a ton of them up in about two feet of water. The problem is I can't see the bottom. That's two of them I landed on. They're both males. Well, if he's nine, he'll go. If I can... Yeah, he's nine again. There's a nine mark. He's barely nine, but he's gonna go in the box. And that's number nine. I, yeah, this is, uh, that's pretty crazy. It's, it's less than two and a half feet of water up there. There must be a ton of beds just way up on top. Let's see if I can turn around and show you guys what the heck I'm looking at. It must be deep enough for them to grab it. They're just not taking it. There he is, got him that time. That is not a big one, unless he's running at me. Oh, well, he might be a decent one. He's running at me. Oh, he just came off. Should probably get the net out. Be a good idea, right? That was another male. I saw the belly on him. I'm guessing those are fry garters because the females that we have been catching, they've been out a little bit deeper, five to six feet. These males are coming out at two feet and they're probably on their beds. I think there's probably a ton of crappie beds up there. There he is. Oh, there was another one. Dang it, I missed it. Come a ton of beds up in that flat and I'm just slowly popping this. There, there he is, got him that time. Yeah, they run at me. Oh my gosh, what is going on? Do I need to change out jigs? That's two now. Right, let's get it back over there. That's two that I lost. I put the plastic way up on that barb, so hopefully they bite more of the hook now instead of just the plastic tip. You see, I'm just working. I'm just slowly popping it, letting it sit in there for five to six seconds. If I don't get a bite right away, or, you know, within that time frame, pop it again. You, one of two things are happening. Either I'm, that jig, as I'm popping it closer to the boat, it's falling right on top of a crappie bed, or these crappie are slowly chasing it as I keep popping it like that. Oh, there we go. There you go. Got him. That number 10. Stay on there, buddy. That is a male. <laughs> that is a spawning male. Holy smokes. He choked it too. There was no doubt on that one. This guy inhaled it. That is what a spawning male really looks like. See, that's a pure black belly right there. That's a definite nine, nine to 10 inch fish here. Yeah, he's just shy of 10. He's gonna go in the box with me. That's gonna wrap it up. Side imaging is kind of tough this time of year, uh, but the things that you're going to utilize side imaging for are that we break up shallow. Um, typically in our Northern states, most of the May is our spawning season for crappie and bluegill and bass and all that stuff. Our crappie will spawn into June. That probably that first week, there'll still be a wave of spawners. Uh, up shallow. So what you're looking for is that weed growth and here it was 
probably stopped about six, seven feet of water. That's when the weed stopped. But there were certain patches that were wide open in three to four feet of water. And it seemed like actually the later part of the video of catching those, those males up in like three feet, there were sparse pieces of weeds, but then there was open flats between them. I'm going to guess those males were spawning or were on beds and, and fry garters um, in those kind of that open area between the weeds. Um, the females that I did catch were right on the edge of the weeds. I, as I was ripping this bobber through, um, or ripping the jig through that kind of that weed mat, you could feel all the weeds grab the jig, but as soon as it swung down and to the point where I couldn't feel any weeds anymore, that's typically when I got those bites. So they were either sitting right on top of the weeds or they're sitting right on the edge of them. But side imaging, what you're gonna to wanna to look for is that weed break, that weed line break. Typically this time of year, again, it's gonna be probably less than eight feet of water and uh, you're just gonna cast into that. Whether you're using a, a bobber technique like this or you're just casting your jig out and uh, rolling that jig right across the weed edge. Huge thanks to uh, Tommy. Nice meeting you in Texas last November. Thank you for the uh, bonehead tackle box. Again, you can pick up bonehead tackle stuff at crappiecove.com. I'm gonna get out of here because weatherman lied, said it was only gonna be 82. It feels like 92 right now. I don't know if you can see, but I'm pretty much sweated through my entire hat. Yeah, it's, uh, it's hot. I appreciate you watching as always. If you got any comments or questions, post them in the comment section below. Also, you can message me on their Facebook or Instagram. Rod reel setups, tackle setups, sonar, these guys. I don't know if you guys see uh, sonar setups. A lot of you uh, this time of year are buying new sonar units, so don't hesitate. Ask me what you're buying, what your budget range is on Facebook or Instagram, send me a message. I also got an email in the video description if that's something you're more comfortable with. So I'm gonna get off the water, we'll see ya.